Hi, this is my first video doing voiceover, so um, if the microphone quality is bad, or if my voice is annoying, um, I know, sorry. Also, I didn't really write a script for this, so sorry if I ramble or get off topic. I don't really believe in writing scripts, it's not fun for me, it's not fun to write them, it's not fun to read them, so... I just wrote down talking points. Also, because this is unscripted, it might sound unscripted. So I'm probably going to have a few ums and ahs and other stutters uh, in here because that's just how I talk, that's just how I think. Uh, and as I said before, I'm not reading off a script. I'm just kind of letting my thoughts flow. That being said, let's get into it. I started Pokemon with Generation 3. Emerald was my first game. I was a little bit young at the time. Uh, most people who I've spoken to my age started with Gen 4. Uh, they started with Diamond and Pearl. Generation 1 and Generation 8 are the only games that I haven't experienced at all, really. Uh, every other generation, I've played either the originals or the remakes but I never played Fire Red, Leaf Green, I never played the originals. Aside from the post-game of uh, Soul Silver, I've never actually played a Gen 1 experience. But despite that, Gen 1 still has a lot of designs that I really like. And just to be clear, we're just talking about designs here. We're not talking about competitive viability. That kind of thing is beyond me. But overall, Gen 1 is full of solid designs. There are only a handful of designs from Gen 1 that I actually dislike. Pretty much all of them, I'm either ambivalent on or I like. It's a really cohesive generation of designs. That being said, one of the designs that I don't like is Charizard. Not necessarily because of the design itself, but because of all the attention it gets from Game Freak. I mean, it's a miracle that we didn't get a Paradox Form Charizard, but the fact that the first Terra Raid event was a Charizard says volumes, and I wouldn't be surprised if it gets a Paradox Form in the DLC. It's not even that bad of a design. It's just very plain in comparison to the other two final starters. Blastoise being a huge, bulky tank of a turtle with blasters coming out of its shell. That's really cool, that's an interesting design. Or Venusaur, which I personally think is the strongest and has aged the best out of the three, is some kind of prehistoric looking toad with a whole jungle growing on its back. It's such a basic and yet versatile concept that it was essentially reused for a later final starter, Torterra. And then there's Charizard, which in comparison to the other two, doesn't seem to have a lot going for it. I mean, for Gen 1, the fact that it was kind of a dragon, in design at least, was really cool, considering that there were only two or three other blatantly draconic Pokémon, depending on how you see it. I personally think that Gyarados is very draconic, but that's an argument for another day. And I understand that a lot of it has to do with hardware limitations. A lot of Gen 1's designs had to be very simple, very streamlined, and it gave them, like I said, a very coherent identity. But at the same time, I just find myself liking a lot of the other, slightly more complex designs better than Charizard. It doesn't have a lot going for it other than the fact that it's a dragon, or dragon-like Pokémon, in a generation with very few of those. And, of course, the dinky little fire on its tail. In my unprofessional opinion, it just doesn't hold up. So I decided to redesign it. You might actually see flashes of another redesign I just did. I didn't record it, unfortunately, but I was using it as a reference when I was drawing this. 
I was inspired to redesign Charizard after I redesigned the Scoville'n line. I was particularly disappointed with our first Grassfire Pokémon's design. I also gave it a third evolution, uh, in which it turns into a really cool Hydra Pepper Pokémon. But that's besides the point. We're here to talk about Charizard. Most of the time, I start my design process long before I actually start drawing. I'll get some idea in my head, and I'll just keep thinking about it and building on top of it until I have the time to sit down and actually draw it out. This was a little bit different. I knew that I wanted to redesign Charizard, but I wasn't entirely sure how until I started thinking about Venusaur and why I like it so much. Two of my favorite parts of the Venusaur line are arguably its most defining feature, the plants growing on its back, and weirdly enough, I've always really liked those chunky shapes on its body. You know, those rounded triangles on Bulbasaur's head. They're so undeniably Generation 1 to me. So. I started to think about how I could somehow incorporate those two ideas onto Charizard. Obviously, I didn't want to keep the jungle idea as is, but I wanted to somehow tie that concept into Charizard. Something that I really like about newer generations and their starters is that they've often got some kind of linking theme between the three of them. However, I'm not always a fan of the execution. It usually feels like one out of the three is only tangentially related to the other two. But that's besides the point. I got to thinking about how I would unify all three designs if given the choice. Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. Building off of what I like about Venusaur again, I thought a unifying theme could be habitat or environment. Venusaur has a jungle, so Charizard could be a volcano. And if I ever chose to redesign Blastoise, which I might not, I was thinking it could be a hot spring or a geyser. I'm not so sure about typing. Uh, you might notice I wrote down fire ground, I think. I'm not really married to that idea. I think that it could stay fire flying, it could go fire dark. There's a few different routes it could go. I'm not really concerned about the typing of my hypothetical Charizard redesign, though. But from the volcano theme, it was easy to incorporate those chunky shapes that I liked, making the lower half of its body and tail almost covered in char or maybe stone. It's up for interpretation. I also almost didn't include the flame on its tail, but decided it was too vital to Charizard's design to leave it out all the way. Charmander and Charmeleon don't have it, instead they've just got kind of a smoldering tail tip. But I kept the flame for Charizard. You'll also notice I included Charizard's Mega Evolutions, but not its Gigantamax form. This is because I think Gigantamax is stupid. Like, okay, a little side tangent here. I don't hate gimmicks. In fact, I like gimmicks a lot of the time. I just hate when gimmicks are introduced every single game only to be dropped in the next one. Mega Evolutions were really cool, a lot of fans really liked them, and then they were gone by Sword and Shield, so why did you even do them in the first place? Okay, side rant over. You'll also notice I make no attempt to replicate the Ken Sugimori or... What's his name? Josh Turner? Interjecting to say James Turner. Not Josh Turner. Josh Turner is some white musician. Uh, either of the official Pokemon styles. I think that the official Pokemon art is really, really cool. It's got an amazing sense of form and volume, but it's just not fun for me to replicate, so I don't try to. Anyways, moving on from that, back to uh, talking about Mega Evolutions. In Charizard's Mega Evolutions, I wanted to evoke the different states of a volcano. I was thinking regular Charizard would be the dormant volcano Pokemon. 
while Mega Charizard X would be the erupting volcano Pokemon, representing, like, destruction and the awesome power of the Earth. <laughs> And then Mega Charizard Y, keeping with its slim build and obviously more flying based design, it would represent like volcanic ash being spewed into the sky and how far that can travel and how quickly it can travel. But they're two equally destructive forces, though in different ways. Someone might argue that that's a little too complex for Pokemon design philosophy, but at the end of the day, these are my designs. Uh, I made them for me, I made them for fun, and I made them the way that I like to design. Anyways, a uh, lightning round of little design choices I made and why? Charmander now has a little bump on the back of its head, not because I like that design choice or anything, but because I couldn't find another way for it to not look so much like Squirtle. I just kept drawing it and it just kept looking like Squirtle to me, so I had to find a way to make it not look like Squirtle. I gave Charmeleon a little nose horn. Originally, I think that I had planned to put the nose horn on Charmander because this is a really weird, specific reference, but if any of you remember that Dragonology book, I'm pretty sure that they've got some illustrations in there about how, like, baby dragons have these little horns that they use to break out of their shells and how they fall off a little bit after they're born. And I don't know, that's just something that's always stuck with me as, like, quintessential dragon anatomy. Uh, but I left it off Charmander because I thought that it looked too complex, and I put it on Charmeleon because out of the three, it's got, like, this very angry look to it. It's got this very angry personality, and I thought that it just fit better. I also changed Charmeleon's stance. The way that its arms and legs were posed just made it look really weightless in a way that I don't think was intentional, but I thought that it had more weight this way, it felt more grounded, and it looked a bit more dinosaur-like with the way that I posed its arms. This didn't make it into the final design, but I had been considering putting a little crack through the middle of Charmander's belly color to kind of look like an egg hatching. I decided it was too complex for a first stage Pokemon and then didn't fit with the second or third stages for obvious reasons, but I just wanted to include that it was a design trait that I thought about. And I changed the colors on all of them just a little bit. Just little shifts in hue and tone, mostly for personal preference. I just like this palette better, uh, and I think that it fits better with my style, which has a, a bit more of a cartoony, bubbly look to it. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble for an entire 13 minutes. I hope you enjoyed my weird little explanation of why I redesigned one of the most beloved characters in the Pokemon franchise. Thanks! Bye!